Welcome to the Public Sector Marketing Show, a podcast for government and public sector marketing professionals who want to level up their digital marketing and social media knowledge, skills, and strategic thinking. And now, welcome your host, Joanne Sweeney. Hello, and welcome to episode 51 of the Public Sector Marketing Show. So I've been running a recruitment campaign for my own business, but also helping clients with their recruitment campaigns. And increasingly, social media and digital skills are coming up in recruitment conversations. But what if you're a public sector professional that has strong social media skills? Can you leverage them to get up the next rung off the career ladder? Absolutely. And in this show, I'm going to tell you that now is the time to shine if you are a proficient social media marketer, what an employer will look for before and during interview. And I speak to Caroline Reedy, who is the CEO of the HR Suite. She provides tips and insights and really useful information on the role social media plays in your job hunt in 2022. So whether you're seeking a promotion in an existing public sector organization, if you want to sidestep into another one, or if you're currently working in the private sector and would like to get into the public sector, stay tuned. In today's column, I'm going to talk about why it's your time to shine as a proficient social media marketer. These skills are in huge demand and in actual fact, there are new roles being created for digital communications executives. And obviously within that role, social media plays a huge part. So if you've been silently upskilling on social media over the past couple of years during the pandemic, or you ha- if you have an intention to upskill in 2022, then you should be leveraging this in interview. As an employer and also as a social media marketer myself, I know why these skills are really, really important. Social media is now a fundamental way in which we communicate. More and more budgets are going into digital communications and in social media. The social media landscape itself is changing so quickly. And so if you have the knowledge and skills to jump from Instagram to TikTok and then over to Twitter and LinkedIn for corporate comms, then you will be in high demand. If you're new to social media from a work context, but you use it personally, that's okay also. What I would say to you is make a commitment to yourself that this year you are going to upskill in social media for public sector. You're going to lean in and to understand why Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn are the perfect corporate comms platforms and why TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram are the perfect channels if your agency wants to engage with the public. There might be a whole suite of private sector professionals who would like to get into public sector and potentially get that job for life. Well, these tips are for you also. When you go from private sector to public sector, you will need to understand the nuances and the differences, conversations around policy, the role that politics plays in public sector communications. So there's very many different aspects that you have to understand. When I developed our accredited courses a number of years ago in social media for government and public sector and crisis comms and digital marketing for government and public sector, I brought that knowledge, that understanding that in the public interest messaging is key, that really you're using social media to build trust and transparency and the motivation to convert an audience might simply be to get them to your website to find out more information. But let me tell you, as somebody who's working in the space every single day, government and public sector agencies do not have enough social media skills within their organization. They cannot continue to outsource this job. They need their own people cross departments, cross different heads within the organization to understand and to appreciate what social media can do. Level up your social media skills by taking our diploma in social media, plus gain an industry qualification. Use the code socialmedia20 for a 20% discount. Visit publicsectormarketingpros.com.
In today's consulting segment, I'm going to share with you what an employer will look for in terms of social media skills and competencies. Let me tell you, social media is a little bit of a jigsaw. There are so many important components to it. And some of those skills that you will need to have include being a great copywriter. You know, it's not okay just to send out a tweet without thinking about how you craft that tweet. Similarly, an Instagram post or a Facebook post or writing a LinkedIn article. Copywriting skills are paramount. Another aspect of that social media jigsaw that you'll need to get all those pieces fitting together perfectly is your ability to understand the language of public sector. Using sales-based copy that you might have used in a previous job in the private sector isn't going to cut it. If you're new into public sector, you might want to read yourself into the brief and get a real understanding of what that agency is responsible for, why they're engaging particular cohorts of the public and of the nation, and what they want that public to do when they engage with them on social media. So having that real great understanding of how public sector operates will be key. Another aspect to your social media skill set that you need to sharpen is certainly the tactics that are working right now on the social networks. Let's face it, in recent days, we heard that Facebook's share price dropped. Such is the flocking of users over to TikTok. If you've been putting your focus on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, but haven't looked at Reels within Instagram or haven't looked at how TikTok is commanding so much market share, then you will really need to ensure that you are keeping up to date with the changes in the social media landscape. Another element that is really important is being able to read social media data because all of the answers to your questions around social media performance, strategy and horizon scanning lies in those insights. And if you can read those dashboards of numbers and be able to tell a story of trends that are happening and forecasting your next move, then that is something that is probably going to land you a job in public sector as a social media marketer or indeed as a communications manager. So take an audit of your current social media skill, skill set right now. Have a think about where you'd like to be in 2022 in terms of your career. And if you have any questions about upskilling or going for a job, feel free to reach out to me. Drop me an email to info at publicsectormarketingpros.com or you can send me a message on any of the social networks. And talking about social media skills, you can actually upskill right now by joining our social media bootcamp. All of our workshops are available on demand at publicsectormarketingpros.com from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. I will tell you right now what tactics government and public sector should be leaning into in order to get maximum organic reach. So if you are intending a career move in 2022, taking our social media boot camps will help you have the edge over other candidates. A one-stop shop digital marketing and social media resource. Join our membership academy for 12 months. Access a library of how-to videos, template strategies, and organizational policies. Monthly live coaching. Attend webinars with subject matter experts. Meet and network with public sector pros from across the world. Use the code MEMBERSHIP20 for a 20% discount. Visit publicsectormarketingpros.com. Now, I'm no HR or recruitment expert, but I thought it was really important that we invited an expert into this episode to talk us through the power of having social media skills when going for interview, whether going for promotion in your existing organization or whether you're joining a new public sector agency. So I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by Caroline Reedy, who is the CEO of the HR Suite. She has built a phenomenal digital presence. That's just a side 
note. And if you're in Ireland, you will see Caroline on TV shows. You'll hear her on radio shows and quoted in newspaper articles. So I'm absolutely thrilled to have Caroline on the show. We originally met a number of years ago. We were sharing a stage at a National Women in Business event. She's got all the tips for you now if you want to get a new job in 2022. Caroline, it's so great to see you after all these years. I know it's still virtual, but thank you so much for joining me on the show. My pleasure. Delighted to be here, Joanne. So we're going to talk about the role of social media in enhancing your employment opportunities, because as you well know, social media has been layered on top of people's work because it's fundamental uh, on how we communicate. But do you think in your experience dealing with the employers day in, day out, that social media is an important skill set right now? I think it's one of the top ones, Joanne, because it's the opportunity to showcase what knowledge and skill you have to a wider audience. And as well, I think now it's nearly a prerequisite uh, for most positions and most roles that we are tech savvy in relation to that communication and maximizing the platform um, in whatever way you can personally for your department, for the projects you're involved in, et cetera, adds huge opportunity and not doing it, I think, is a shame that you're missing out on this big opportunity. And, you know, oftentimes employers um, and managers would consider that the role of social media would be best left to somebody younger who potentially oh. is a digital native. Um, but do you think there's a growing expectation that those in middle management and at senior leadership have the capability to represent their organizations on social media also? Oh, I think absolutely. I think um, I think people have really embraced it. Um, and I think for an awful lot of um, middle management and, you know, different cohorts of the different generations in work now, I think the majority of them are using it in different forms. I think it's important, though, to stay up to speed with the new advances and also stay up to speed with the right um, messaging, the right audience. Um, and remember, I suppose, the piece around who are you actually communicating to and what is your message? So I think we're, we all like to think we are good at it. But it's something that you have to keep honing as a skill because it goes out of date quite quickly. So I think constantly honing it, developing it and being aware of how important it is will ensure that we do stay on top of it proactively. So a number of years ago, I remember doing a piece of work for BDO, the accounting firm in Limerick, and they did a study on how candidates are being viewed on social media before they're even being called for interview. So let's we're in 2022 now. Are recruiters and also employers looking at the social media footprint of prospective candidates before they're even called for interview? I think most people now, even on their CV, have their LinkedIn um, and the CV is nearly the calling card to say, please look at my social media platforms. Um, and again, if it's on social media, it's a public uh, window. It's available for people to view. And I think particularly the LinkedIn um, CV really is what it is now gives so much more rich information than what a CV does because the LinkedIn profile will normally give you somebody's interests, uh, what they're you know passionate about, projects they've done, etc. So I think that particularly is becoming more and more relevant and huge overlap as well with positions being advertised, etc. So I think social media is here to stay and it's just making sure that we're maximizing it as best we can so that we're putting our best shop window out there for people to see. So you mentioned LinkedIn and it's my favorite social network because you're absolutely right. You get a rounded view of an individual, but also their connections. And some people go there and they put their, they update their CV part of LinkedIn. But what about publishing content and talking about what you know is, is that a good idea to do that? Yeah, I think it's really important. And I think those that do that well, I think really demonstrate how they've got lots more potential in lots of different areas. So like recently, I've seen a lot of people putting up maybe um, charities they're involved in, clubs, societies or other types of organizations that mightn't be their mainstream job 
but they've got very active roles in. So it shows that even though their role might be finance, for example, they're doing marketing for a, a local charity or they might be doing, you know, a treasury role, for example. Um, they might have also, you know, been involved in other types of activities which show breadth and depth of competencies that maybe you wouldn't necessarily see without hearing about those types of stories and areas they're involved in. So I think when we go back and think about, so when you're giving somebody uh, an opportunity to see what are you about, you want to make sure that you portray all the competencies that they have and they want for that role. And this gives you a kind of 3D image of that rather than it just being a CV, which is very hard, let's be honest, to get across an awful lot of information in uh, and to stand out, whereas LinkedIn gives you that opportunity. But you're putting yourself out there. And for some, that's, you know, the feeling of putting themselves out of their comfort zone. Or for some, they don't like to blow their own trumpet. And it's kind of a case of, will that look bad now? Because I'm saying I'm after getting this award or I'm after doing this thing. Whereas you just need to embrace it and appreciate the fact that's what it's there for, to give you that opportunity to put all those things out there, to be admired and appreciated for the additional dimension of skills that you may be bringing to a role. Yeah, and that's a great thing about LinkedIn. You know, we are there to blow our own trumpet, but to really celebrate our own achievements. And it's a really friendly um, place and amenable place to be. And I still haven't met anyone who's got trolled on LinkedIn. So no, I always, very positive. I always, yeah, I always uh, appease people when it comes to that fear. So let's say somebody is going for a an interview and they really have that social media skill set. It's maybe their unique selling point and differentiation among other candidates. Um, how would you advise them to, to leverage that in interview? I think it's to play to what is the job looking for. So normally they will be like they're looking for ad additional competencies for whatever reason. So they might be looking for something in terms of, um, you know, customer experience. They might be looking for something in terms of client engagement. They might be looking for something in terms of knowledge of compliance, you know, these additional skills and use that to demonstrate your skills. So, for example, you might have done an article on an area of compliance you're particularly interested in. So explain and put across the fact that this is on your LinkedIn profile and put, note that in your CV and also give them that opportunity to view that. So I think this shows you're not alone a, a subject matter expert, but you can actually get the message across succinctly. You can also engage with your audience and know your audience. So it adds without doubt huge advantage, but don't underestimate the need to make sure that you're you're developing those skills as well. Because I think what got us here won't get us there. There's lots of new platforms. There's lots of new ways of engaging. And it's important that we do maximize that opportunity to do it to the best we can. Because I think then the other side of it is if you do a bad job, that's highlighting you in, in other ways as well. So make sure that if you're doing it, you're doing it to a really high standard would be the advice. And thinking about now more senior leadership roles. And if I think of somebody like Paul Reed and what he did during the pandemic in terms of communications and leadership, because that's my area of interest, you know, a, a morning tweet every single morning and updating people and thanking people um, and leading the broadcasting of press conferences uh, on Facebook and on Twitter for the public to see and not just for media who were in attendance. Um, there seems to be a real shift in the voice of senior leadership in all sectors. And are you seeing that also? I mean, you're in the front line of, of, of recruitment, right? Yeah, without doubt. Um, I think the leaders that have stood out and stood up and, you know, have really um, proven themselves as true leaders during the last two years are those that are very much in touch with the need to communicate, communicate, communicate in a real authentic and genuine way. And you couldn't have picked a better example than Paul. And what I love about Paul as well is he shows his personal side as well. You know, the grandchildren and his daughter away and stuff like that, that you really feel a connection with a real person working in a very difficult environment. So I think the leaders that are authentic and demonstrate that in a very real way, I think without doubt, I think we've all realized that that's what we want, you know, and we want people to, to have that human factor. So communication is going to be something that, you know, emotional intelligence, you know, we, we've been focusing on for a really long time in terms of what gets you promoted 
you know, is going to be the emotional intelligence. It's going to be your people management skills, your communication skills, etc. But they're the skills that don't come naturally to everybody. Like people would often say to me, listen, I've spent years in college being an amazing accountant or being an amazing IT person. And then all of a sudden, the higher up you go in an organization, the more you do less of those and the more you manage people and manage the culture. And remember the whole concept of culture eat strategy for breakfast. So, again, focusing on that leadership and that communication without, you know, it being part of your normal day to day job and being courted, I think you won't get the people to follow. And we're in a talent war now where if people don't feel connected to your organization, then they're going to go somewhere else. And that connection and that authenticity and that culture has to stop start from the top in terms of those core values. But I think without, you know, overdwelling the, the fact that, you know, that realness is something that you know, people say, well, what makes up that realness and that authenticity that adds that connectedness? And oftentimes it's things like the examples you've given that bring that feeling of being connected and part of that organization because somebody is authentically communicating in a proactive way. So that's some of the do's from a HR perspective. What are the don'ts that you don't want to see uh, happening on social media? Yeah, like I suppose sometimes people can have very strong opinions on different things but there's um a need i suppose to be measured around your opinions if they're going to cause i suppose a, a complete jarring with what the organizational values are and i think where recently you've seen certain leaders and they've made comments you know really like kind of unthought through you know very much provoking type of comments and the thing about social media is you have an immediate response so if you do a brilliant job you get the immediate positivity but if you do it badly you get the immediate backlash and we've seen where people have done a really bad job and have got that backlash lash so we need to, I suppose, make sure that we're conscious that this is a business platform. If you're thinking of LinkedIn, if you're thinking of Twitter, your brand is hugely important to this. And for a lot of people working, particularly in the public sector and other organizations, their brand and the company brand can become quite entwined. So it's making sure that you're not damaging your own brand, nor are you damaging the brand of anybody else. And, you know, we've seen how, um, you know, Josh Rogan, you know, all the controversy associated with um, people's, you know, strong power now of being able to make decisions that really make a huge impact on the business and on like a global brand like Spotify, for example. You know, so again, it's just being mindful of what are the potential, you know, implications of what might be an innocent comment that could really go badly wrong. Do you think that social media should become a skill set in everybody's competencies, even if you don't work in marketing or comms? I think it's becoming like that, Joanne, that, you know, most people need to be good at um, social media because it's becoming such a big part of everybody's both personal and work life now. Um, and there definitely should be um, at least a, an awareness around, you know, the pros, the cons, the how to do it right, the what to do and what not to do. Um, I suppose it's also an area that you could end up losing hours of your time and it could be an area that really could feed into unproductivity, you know, so you want to be careful and mindful as well that people don't end up going down that rabbit hole of I'm going to put up a post which will take 15 minutes and an hour and 15 minutes later, they're still scrolling. So I think we need to be mindful of you know, it's it's one of those time drains around productivity that can become an issue as well. But in the in the whole, I think it's a great shop window. I think it does hugely positive things in terms of getting messages, you know, across in terms of a communications platform and a really brilliant business network as well, where people can reach out to each other, support each other. And um, that's what we want now, you know, like minded people. And I think it does that very well. So I've seen a lot of marketing and comms jobs uh, appearing up, particularly around public sector. And I think the pandemic has demonstrated that um, even pre pre vaccine in the absence of the vaccine, it was the really strong comms that got us to stay at home and got us to really um, just kind of abide all these new 
behavioral mm-hmm. changes that we had to we had to make. So do you see that comms and marketing space opening up in terms of opportunity in 2022? Yeah, I think um, we see organizations who never before focused on their brand, focused on their communications and their message and their PR, really investing in it as an area for so many reasons around customer retention, around repositioning, around employer engagement and employer branding. Um, You know, there's so many elements to it. It's broadened so much. And I think there's a lot more weight now being put on the value that it brings because they can see the reward for doing it right. And final question, Caroline, top three tips if you're preparing for interview. I suppose really research the company. I mean, you'd be amazed how many people, you know, still come for interview and they they don't they haven't got their homework done. So I think go for less interviews and just if you're going for the interview, really, really do your research and do your homework. I, number two, make sure you have read the job spec and see what competencies they're looking for so that you can give demonstrable examples of what you've done in the past to show that you can do this again in the future for the organization you're applying for. And when they ask you, is there anything else you want to add? That's your opportunity to tell them all the amazing things you've done. And don't be shy about that because people do a lot of stuff in their personal life and, you know, other things that really make a big difference uh, to help them stand out because they're transferable skills. So and enjoy, enjoy, like hopefully it's going to bring people lots of new opportunities. So uh, enjoy. Yeah, it's a very different landscape right now, isn't it? The as you call it, the a turbulent time for uh, employers to keep and also to win staff. But listen, I just want to thank you for coming on the show and also just to call out the great kind of comms work that you are doing on social. And I follow you, you and I get great tips and I see you in mainstream media as well. So um, thank you for all the information that you're sharing. My pleasure. Thank you, Joanne. Great to talk to you. Level up your digital skills by taking our diploma in digital marketing, plus gain an industry qualification. Use the code Digital Marketing Twenty for a twenty percent discount. Visit PublicSectorMarketingPros.com. We have so many free resources for you at Public Sector Marketing Institute. So if you do want to level up your social media skills, make sure that you go to our website, PublicSectorMarketingPros.com. Have a look at the webinar page and have a look at our blog. Even tuning into this podcast and weekly show will help you with your social media knowledge. Our next free webinar, though, is how to create a content marketing strategy in 30 minutes. It's a 45 minute to 60 minute webinar. I'll also be answering your questions. But content planning is critical to social media success. So if this has whetted your appetite, go ahead and register for free. As always, please share this show with a public sector pro that you know we are trying to reach as many government and public sector professionals across the world as possible. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or please rate and review on your favourite podcast platform. And that is episode 51. I will see you on episode 52. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Public Sector Marketing Show. This episode has ended, but your digital journey can continue. Head over to publicsectormarketingpros.com to access resources and links mentioned in today's show and to connect with Joanne and her team. Until the next time, be sure to subscribe, rate and review on your favorite podcast platform.